In this part, we will discuss the factors which affect the enzyme action. There are many factors which affect enzymatic actions in different ways. We'll take all these factors one by one and see how their effect is. First factor that we are talking of is temperature. Temperature is a very, very important factor because these enzymes are tertiary proteins. With increase in temperature, the hydrogen bonds which are essential for maintaining the structure, they break. And that is that temperature plays a very important role. With increase in temperature, the enzymatic activity is going to get affected. But let us first talk about general temperature range where most of the enzymes are working. The temperature range, it varies from 25 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. This is the range where most of the enzymes, they work. Whenever we talk about a factor, we have to understand cardinal points. So here, let us take this cardinal points. For any factor, cardinal points are three. One, a minimum, then optimum and maximum. We'll understand these three points taking this factor. Minimum, if we are talking of temperature, minimum temperature would be that temperature below which the enzymatic activity will totally stop. Optimum temperature would be that temperature where the enzymatic activity would be maximum. And maximum temperature would be that beyond which the enzymatic activity will again stop. If we are taking the example of our body, then what exactly we see is a graph which is like this. With increase in temperature, let us draw this graph. This is the temperature which we call, the. here we are talking of the temperature. This is the optimum temperature. That means at this temperature, the enzymatic activity is maximum. So this is that temperature which is the optimum temperature. At this enzymatic activity is maximum. So the question which comes to our mind is, is our body temperature optimum? That means is that the temperature where our enzymes are working at their maximum potential? The answer is no. This is our body temperature. And our enzymes are at this position. That means they are working at suboptimum. And the reason why they are working at suboptimum because we don't need that much of enzymatic action for our uh, enzymes to perform. But whenever there is a slight infection, and we get that feverish feeling. Whenever we say I'm feeling a little feverish, it happens during throat infections. It happen, happens when we have a running nose, sometimes during stomach upset. We have a feeling that we are having slight fever, which we call feverish. That means our body temperature has gone up a little bit. So from normal body temperature, it has gone slightly higher. And at that higher temperature, because of this heat, the kinetic energy, heat energy get, will get converted into kinetic energy. And our enzymes will be able to work at a faster pace and they would be able to destroy those pathogens which have caused this infection to our body in a more efficient manner. When we don't have any infection, when we are healthy, then even less activity of enzyme is more than enough to take care of all the metabolic activities which are taking place in our body. So in our case, if we have a question that what is the effect of temperature on the enzyme action, we will have to write that with increase in temperature, the enzymatic activity 
activity first increases and then decreases and then decreases because we are talking about our body our temperature body temperature is here when the temperature increases here the temperature is increasing as the temperature increases the enzymatic activity has gone up and there it decreases so having mild fever is a good sign that our body is fighting with that pathogen but very high fever is not a good sign because at a high temperature the enzymes they get denatured at a high temperature enzymes get denatured denatured means their structure is damaged and these are the things which we use on a daily basis we preserve food by two ways either by freezing it at a lower temperature also we see the enzymatic activity is very very low so if we put the food in a refrigerator at a lower temperature the enzymes which are present in the food plus the enzymes of the bacteria or any fungus spores which have fallen on that food those enzymes will be inactive but at low temperature the structure has not been damaged so when we bring it back to room temperature those enzymes will regain their activity the second method of preservation is heated so when we heat or cook the food all those enzymes which are there they get denatured so when heated food is brought back to normal those enzymes do not regain their structure because this enzyme formation can take place only in the living system not outside so low temperature inactivates enzyme high temperature denatures it low temperature inactivates inactivates enzyme and high temperature denatures enzymes but we also have heard of certain microbes which can survive in hot springs like we uh, take the names of uh, thermophilus bacteria those they are living in a condition where the temperature is like boiling water temperature 100 degrees or 90 degrees then how do they survive there these organisms they have evolved to survive in those conditions and they have special type of enzymes which are thermostable one example of thermostable organism or enzyme we will take that is thermus aquaticus thermus aquaticus is a thermophilus archaebacterium thermo phyllus archaebacterium and it has enzymes which can work at that temperature of 90 degrees or 100 degrees the enzyme is tac polymerase the enzyme is actually a dna polymerase we call it is a dna polymerase but it is known as tac polymerase and we use it during pcr that is polymerase chain reaction when we talk of biotechnology so there we use this because one reaction takes place at a higher temperature our enzymes will not be able to work at that this high temperature so there are organisms which can survive at very high temperature because of the adaptations that they have undergone over thousands of years plus there are organisms which can survive at a very very low temperature organisms which are cold blooded that is poikilotherms they are able to change or adjust their body temperature according to the surrounding but still they cannot survive in extremely low temperature or extremely hot temperature 
So during those extreme conditions, they even go for hibernation or estivation. They can manage to a little range, but not too low or very high. So the, this is how temperature affects the rate of enzymatic action. This is one factor that we have taken. There are more factors which we will discuss next.